what is an artist is where you need to start with what is right. a professional artist. Welcome to the Bold Artist Podcast Summer Sessions. I'm here today with my co-host, Sharla Marskalk. We're talking about what it takes to go pro as an artist. This is a very deep conversation that has many layers, doesn't it, Sharla? <laughs> yeah, even just getting ready for the podcast, we had so many layers, we couldn't even decide <laughs> what to start with. <laughs> yeah, so going pro can be a controversial topic for, for artists because we all see it a little bit different. Um, as a Bold School community, we've been reading The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, and he defines going pro uh, quite in depth as uh, like, what is the difference between amateur and pro? in the book and it's opened up, I don't know if I want to call it a can of worms, <laughs> but it's opened up just, you know, some controversy and some some thoughts on, you know, there are some artists who feel it's it's a mindset to go pro and others that feel like it it equates to your paycheck and what you're actually making in income as a professional artist. And so how do you define it, Sharla? Um, <laughs> defining going pro. I didn't even think it was all that controversial until I really thought about it because I think it's exactly what the industry, um, what we think of the art industry is exactly this, this topic because we, we don't know what artists are. We, nobody knows mm -hmm. what an artist is. People think I'm not an artist cause I can't draw and then I can draw. So I'm an artist and now I'm a professional artist. Mm. Like, it's almost like what, what is an artist is where you need to start with what is right. a professional artist, because you can't just splash paint on a canvas and call yourself an artist. You have to have skill and a message. You have to practice and study and you have to mm -hmm. hone your, your skills, but there is no, um, levels of distinction in the art world. And maybe like in the music world, there may not be levels of distinction either, but there's a more of a societal distinction into what makes a professional musician and what doesn't. And if you get mm -hmm. on stage and sing and you, you're really good, then people can automatically put you in that category. But you can't just get on stage and sing and not be able to carry a tune or not understand right. the keys or how to keep up with the instruments. You know, mm -hmm. you have to have specific skills, but in the art world, you pick up a pencil and you splash something on the canvas and you, they call you an artist. Well, I think fine. You want to be called an artist. I think we're all creative. And one of the mandates and what I preach is that we're all creatives and we need to, to work into that. But what makes you simply, what, what's the difference in a child with a crayon and a piece of paper and a professional artist? I think we mm -hmm. need to create that distinction so that we can, um, this is probably a controversial statement, but so that we can gain respect in the world as artists. Mm -hmm, I think respect mm -hmm. comes with recognizing the work it takes to get somewhere and getting yes. paid for that. So there seems to be one of the distinctions to be whether or not you make money as an artist um, and you know, whether it's your sole income and that, and that seems to draw the line between what's an amateur or hobbyist and what's a professional. And you and I have talked about these different dimensions to becoming a professional. And the dimensions being like our mindset, number one, our skill level and our business experience. And it seems to be that really to succeed as a professional artist or to be like pro, you've got to have those three elements, mindset, skill and business. And so uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the mindset? I know in the Bold School community, um, we we really talk about and, and try to mentor and foster the mindset of artists, um, no matter what level, whether it's just someone who's beginning to be interested in art, wondering if they have talent, or someone who's dabbled in it as a hobbyist as an amateur for a long time and they're contemplating what it would take to go pro so all of those different levels we want to foster the mindset mm -hmm. but yes. tell me talk to me about what is the mindset we need to be ready to go pro 
Oh, I don't know if that's a simple answer either. It's none of these are simple answers. <laughs> yeah, so I think, you know, it's, it's, I look at it as the three dimensions of going pro. And I think in, in the process of manifesting anything in the physical world, we have to first um, bring it into our imagination. You know, like it's, mm-hmm. it has to, in a sense, manifest in our imagination in our mind or, or mm-hmm. be a part of the, the spiritual part of us. It has to be believed to be mm-hmm. real and then, then you manifest it into the physical world. There's nothing that you create in your world. You don't even make a sandwich for your lunch without first thinking about it. So right. our mindset has to always come first. And if you don't believe you're an artist, you can't go pro. If you don't mm-hmm. believe that you can create something beautiful and something with excellence, you're never Mm going to go pro. You're never even going to become an artist. Um, So you have to manifest these beliefs in your mind, Mm -hmm. in your emotions, in your spirit before you'll ever be able to bring it into the world. But then in order to level up, you have to manifest that new level of thinking. And I think that's something we often don't think about. I remember I was listening to this guy on YouTube um, talk about business and and just how to be good at business and how to get better at business and it was like how everyone's reading books and listening to podcasters on how to go from zero to a million and then you get to a million dollars and you're like i did it i did it i reached my goal i reached my dream i'm here like i'm at the top of the mountain but there's a it's just as much of a gap to go from a million to 10 million or a million to 50 million to get now over that next heap Mm -hmm. in business or just in your maybe to have that money in your personal account is another massive learning curve and a lot of Mm -hmm. people actually can go from zero to a million but the stats show that way less go from a million to 10 million because Mm -hmm. that learning is is even bigger and you don't really think that that's the case you think once you Mm -hmm. get to a million you can go anywhere but you mm-hmm. have, what it means is that you have to get your mindset now to a new place. Just because you succeeded mm-hmm. in one phase of the journey does not mean you're going to succeed in the next phase of the journey. You have to work just as hard in the next phase. So yeah. you, you create the mindset to get you where you want to go. But then you have to go back and start in the mindset again. It's like the first step is yeah. to create the mindset then you you go into the skills that you need to develop that and to get to the place you're going to reach your goal and then mm-hmm. the third step is actually reaching your goal so right. you don't just go pro you don't just become an artist you know mm-hmm. yeah so one of the things that that we've said in like pre-show conversation that we were we were just chatting about is how i have seen a big gap between artists who have skills and let's say the mindset and the skills and then artists who have business sense and how sometimes I have seen that someone who's amateur in their skills can have incredible business sense and be selling and you know prospering in their art without such strong skills. And then the other way around where I've seen incredibly gifted, talented artists who are pro in their skills not have the business sense to compensate and and aren't making money in the same way. And Mm -hmm. then there's this, you know, sort of beautiful uh, joining of the two, this this magical moment where an artist comes together with both the pro mindset, pro skill, and pro business sense, Mm -hmm. and they just skyrocket in a whole other level. And, And I think that's a conversation worth having that it's like we have to put some equal weight on developing ourselves in all of those areas yeah. the mindset the skills and and the business sense and um and so you know do you see it like that do you see that gap in, in sort of that division as well yeah i think you know when it comes to like just regular people regular life which is what we all are we're always talking about balance, like how do you balance mm-hmm. work life versus family life? And I don't know if, if balance is, there's lots of like buzzwords out there and trying to replace the word balance because there's, it's not just you work a few hours, you work nine to five and then you spend the equal amount of time with your family. You're creating, um, you're, you're, trying to, you're trying to find balance, but in unique mm-hmm. and different ways to make it work for you and what you want to accomplish. I think 
all of those things that we're talking about, the skills, the business, the, the people skills, the art skills, and the mindset, it's all a balance because it's, if you think about all you have to learn, it becomes overwhelming. And I think for many people, myself included, it's really easy to become very overwhelmed and, and think you can't do it because you don't have the time in the day, you don't have the energy, and you need, you're need you lacking in, or you're neglecting something. Quite often, I feel like I'm neglecting my kids so that I can learn to be better at business, so I can learn mm -hmm. to be better at my art, so that you know, I'm just trying to do a million things, but people do it. They actually, what I go back to is that people actually do it. They can, if somebody out there can accomplish it, then so can I. Because mm -hmm. we're all, we all have different skills, but we can all do the same things, you know, just mm -hmm. in different ways. So there's a balance. And I think that's what that comes to is a balance. Mm -hmm. And I think in order to live a full life, we need to be balanced in all these areas. You can't, I don't know what the point of just honing your art skill is. If you're just going to sit in your studio and no one's ever going to see it and you're never going to be able to take it to the world. And like, what's the... Sure, it's fulfilling to you, but if you want to be a full-time artist, like you have to make money. Like you have to, to mm -hmm, create mm -hmm. a way for that to make money. So mm -hmm. to put effort and time into learning the business, into learning what people skills it requires, because we can all do it, no matter how scared or anxious or introverted we are, mm -hmm. we all have the ability to find our space out there, outside mm -hmm. of our studio. So you, you put in that time, you put in that effort to figure it out and it all, it all becomes beautiful. It's like mm -hmm. making, making food. If you just eat bread every single day, you're going to get sick of it. But if you <laughs> learn how to make a sandwich, like first put a piece of cheese on, well, that's good cheese and bread, but then some meat and then a little bit of pesto and some red yeah. onion. Like it just gets better and better. Your we analogies are the best, Charla. <laughs> And I'm gonna be hungry. I'm gonna be hungry by the sandwich. end of this show. <laughs> so <laughs> be like, we... <laughs> we're stopping. I need to make a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's it's like the idea of the wholehearted artist. You you really are not gonna be fulfilled. I don't care who you are if you're just sitting in the studio. Mm -hmm. You're really just giving in to some of your fears. And yeah. we need to find the balance. We need to put time into all of it. And we mm -hmm. all have time and everything takes time. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. So yeah. we can do it. Like you feel overwhelmed, but you can do it. Yeah, one of the things that you said to me, like as we as we chatted was you, you said to go pro, you gotta work your butt off. <laughs> yes. And that is the time and putting in the time. Yeah. And I think that that might be one of the keys that sets apart the pro from the amateur is just that um, that amount of commitment and time mm -hmm. learning and growing. And let's circle back. We have a few minutes um, for the till the till the end of this summer session. We're going to continue this talk in the next episode, and we're going to talk at that time about three steps on your way to becoming pro three steps that you can take to get your art and your name out there um but let's just circle around for a moment about the mindset because we've talked today about how we need the mindset the skills and the business sense to go pro it's like a balance of these but mm -hmm. the mindset's a biggie because i'm not sure if you can go pro without the mindset and you've yeah, you've talked a so. lot about confidence and i also know that in the community it gets brought up a lot about something called imposter syndrome which i think needs a podcast of its own mm -hmm. but that sense of feeling like a fraud like do i really belong here am i an amateur pretending to be pro a mm -hmm. am i qualified has someone um given me a stamp of approval that i belong in this industry and in this art world and and those are all deep insecurities that amateurs turning pro face and amateur and a yeah. reason why we stay amateur why we stay stay hobbyist because we we just don't believe in ourselves to go pro. Is there a way that we can touch on that just for a minute? I know it deserves its own podcast, but what would you say to the mindset of the one who's holding back from pro because they're lacking confidence? I think you said one thing you said um the stamp of what people you're waiting for the stamp of approval mm. i think that is the key we i had this discussion with my husband a couple of days ago and i was like you know what i think 
it takes because some people might look at me like I'm successful. I have this school and this community and I have this portfolio of art and I'm successful and I've made it to somewhere. And mm. I know that's great. I hope that I can be an inspiration for somebody who's not here and this is their goal. But I have more goals and I, I have to change my mindset to get to the, my next goal. And I like, I'm looking for someone to tell me how to do it. I'm always looking mm. for someone to tell me how to do it. I'm like on YouTube, mm. somebody tell me what I need to know. Right. And tell me the skill I need to learn and tell me how to be a better leader. Like somebody tell me. And then somebody tell me I'm doing it right. And somebody tell me I'm doing it good. And I always want the stamp of approval. And I was talking to my husband about this. And I was also talking with Mary Janelle about this before the podcast started. We watched this movie a few nights ago called King Richard. And it's about uh, ten two tennis players, uh, Serena and Venus, and about their father. And my husband's a tennis player. So this movie was kind of like a big deal and we watched it and it, it meant a lot. It was actually a really good movie. And so King Richard just plows forward in what he wants for his, the life of his girls and I guess his family's life in general and nothing stops him. And he does it in a new way that nobody's ever done it before. Like Venus and Serena went pro in a way that had never ever happened. And here he was, you know, a black man and a black family in, in living in poverty pushing through all of these boundaries it's it's just so beautiful and so inspiring mm. and it's like i said to, i said to ryan like how do you do it how do you push forward without a stamp of approval because richard didn't have a stamp of approval from anybody he just did it and i'm like how do i do that in business and how do i do that in my art and, and ryan looks at me he's like king richard and i'm like i had that exact thought i'm like king richard he <laughs> yeah. didn't have a stamp of approval yeah he just believed that what he the plan he had in his mind for his girls was going to work and mm -hmm. he didn't let anybody stop him he just went people tried to but he kept going over and over and over them until yeah. it worked we all know it worked and i think it's 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 not looking to somebody else for approval and i think that's yes. what we all want and i think m most of us have the story that at some point in our life someone told us we're not an artist Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, well, I'm not an artist, so I'm just going to quit. And now we're back at another point in your life saying, well, I want to do this because it's always been in my heart and I'm going to do it now. Maybe somebody gave you the approval or maybe mm -hmm. you just gave it to yourself. But mm -hmm. I, think, I think approval from other people is good. It validates us. But we really need to learn to trust ourselves and to, to, to learn from other people and to go out mm. and seek advice and mentoring, I believe is so important, mm -hmm. but yes. we have to trust ourselves, And that's how you can change your own mindset is believing that you can find the right way. Not believing that yes. whatever you do is great because that's probably not true, but believing that you can find the right way. So, so I hear that the right, of approval. yeah. And I hear that right King there. Richard. Watch King Richard. I hear that right there being the number one key. Like you just un yeah. unlock the number one key to the mindset is learning to trust yourself. And yeah. so Charlotte and I just want to thank you for joining us here today on the summer sessions. And we don't want you to miss out on our newsletters. So make sure to get on the newsletter at boldschool.com. And you can find us on Instagram at boldschoolinc. And uh, there is lots more. So stay tuned to the summer sessions here on the Bold School YouTube channel. Until next time, keep creating.